In our previous video, we saw how to set up the flash file system on the ESP8266. After making a few changes, we were able to upload files included in a data subdirectory. We use the Tools menu option, which takes a really long time. This needs to be repeated every time we make a change on the file. So today, we're going to learn a much quicker way on how to do so. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They're currently offering a great deal just $2 for 10 prototype PCBs with fast turnaround time. They offer a variety of options and the resulting PCBs work great. They also offer stencils, have great facilities and wonderful people, so I encourage you to give them a try. The first thing we'll do is download our tips repository from the URL which I'll leave in the description of the video. I'll copy to my desktop the web server SPI FFS example. I'll rename it to web server HTTP upload and do the same thing for the actual code file. I'll open it in the Arduino IDE, making sure that the USB drivers are installed as we've done in other videos. I'll go ahead and connect the board to the USB. I'll then select the corresponding option from the tools menu for the board and the port then remembering that this directory already includes a subdirectory called data with an index.html file in it, I'll select the option from the tools menu to upload it to the flash file system. If this is not clear, go back to the SPI FFS video where I explain things more clearly. Notice that this process takes over a minute and a half. That's a really long time. So if I wanna test that file out, then I need to make changes to the firmware, then upload the firmware, which is a much quicker process, open up the serial monitor to get the IP address of the ESP8266, and use it to load the file from my browser. If I wanna make a change to the file, I can't do it on the ESP8266, so I need to open it in my preferred text editor on my computer, make the change, and go back to the Arduino IDE and re-upload it to flash memory. This process will once again take over a minute and a half. You can see how it becomes tedious, so we need to find a better way of proceeding. To do that, we'll start by getting rid of stuff we're not going to need. The definition of the pin number, also the declaration of the route that we were using to toggle the LED on and off. And we'll start by adding a route that will allow us to see all the files that are currently inside the flash file system. The access route will be list. When it's access, it'll call a function named handle file list. For consistency, I'll rename the function that's called when the top root path is accessed then proceed to define the handle file list function. To list all the files, we'll start with a string variable called path. For the sake of simplicity, I'll assume that there are no subdirectories, but only file currently uploaded to the flash file system. I'll use the opener method of the SPI FFS object to return all the files currently in the file system. Then I'll start constructing the string that will contain all the files that are currently stored. I'll iterate through all the files using a while loop with the next method of the dir object. To get each file, I'll use the open file method of the dir object. For each return file, I'll use the name method in combination with the substring method of the string object to get the name of the file. And I'll add it to the string that we want to output. For readability, I'll add a comma in between each file entry, and I'll remember to close each file after getting the name. Once I've gone through all the files, 
I'll format the string and return it using the send method of the server object so that we can see it in a client browser. We can upload the firmware to test things out, go to our browsers and access the list path. We see that currently there is only one file in the file system, namely the index.html that we uploaded priorly. Now that we're able to see the files that are currently inside the file system, we can worry about uploading more. I'll start by declaring a variable that will hold the uploaded file. I'll then create the route where we're going to be uploading the files and I'll name it upload. I'll only allow uploads using the HTTP post method and when the route is accessed, it'll call an anonymous function that'll simply send a plain text reply formatted in JSON saying that the status is OK. In addition to sending this reply, I'll call a function to handle the actual upload. In the definition of the handle file upload function, I'll start by instantiating an object of the HTTP upload class. We can use that object to monitor the status of the upload itself. I can use the status property of the HTTP upload object to know in which step we're in. In the first step, we'll get the name of the file that is about to be uploaded and add a forward slash if it's needed. I'll add a couple of debug messages so that I know that things are working correctly. Using the SPIFFS object, we can then create the file in the flash file system that is about to be uploaded. Then in the second step is where we actually write the contents of the file onto the flash file system. We can only do so if the file was successfully created If it is, we can get the contents and its size through the upload object. In the last step of the file upload process, we'll once again check that the file was actually created and if it was, we'll go ahead and close it. For debugging purposes, I'll print out another set of messages with the size of the file. And we're ready to test things out, so let's upload the firmware, make a change to the HTML file, then instead of using the tools menu option through the Arduino IDE, I'm going to use the command line utility curl with a few options pointing to the location of the file and the IP address and route of where I want to upload it to. Notice that this just takes a couple of seconds, I get the response message, and if I go back to my browser, refresh the page, I can see the change that I just included. To test it once again, I can make a copy of the file without any changes, go back to the terminal, upload that second file, and then I can access the list route to see if it was actually uploaded. And there you have it. We have two files in the flash file system in a shorter amount of time than it would have taken to upload a single file through the Arduino IDE. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.